Hi, this is going to be a very quick video that's a response to a question that I've got from a student. And the question was, when using a breadboard do we have to have the positive supply up the top and the zero volts down the bottom on our breadboards? And the short and simple answer is no, you don't have to do that. However, my advice is that if you can keep your breadboard layout as similar to the original circuit diagram, then that's going to help you both in uh, laying out the, the circuit and also identifying problems with the circuit. Now, I've just drawn the most simple circuit here and I'm sure you're aware that that is the positive side of the battery and that's a negative. So this is the positive rail and that in this case will be the uh, zero volt, we could call that um, zero volt anyway. Um, so if we wanted to, and it's, um, as I say, it's not compulsory, but if we wanted to, and if we were using a breadboard like this, and notice there's a long rail along the top and bottom. By the way, I've marked in pen just to remind me that actually, if I want to continue this rail from this section to the next, I need to put a jumper there, but don't worry about that for the moment. And so if I were using this breadboard, I would probably, ideally, lay it out something like that. Okay, so we've got the... Uh, red lead, ideally use red for the positive supply, it just makes it easier because then everyone else in the class is doing the same as well, then that would be uh, that would be fine, okay? You don't have to do it like that way, you could switch them around, but I recommend not. Now sometimes when you've got an integrated circuit, and you place the integrated circuit in, then it might be that the positive supply for the integrated circuit is say down the bottom and then it might be that you then you need to route a wire around if you're using a breadboard like this that's not a problem you could if you want turn the um, integrated circuit around um, I don't like to do that if I've got an integrated circuit uh, I like to keep uh, pin one down there okay so that is my that's my preference. Uh, there's no rule to say you have to have the pin one bottom left, but that's what I always do on breadboards. Um, once again, if uh, most of you do it like that, uh, then because you're being consistent with other people, you're going to find it's easier to like compare your circuits and, and things. Okay. Now, uh, most of you don't have an old breadboard like this. This is just one from my junk box. So, but just in case you do, I show you that. Uh, so many of you are going to have one like this. Let's just zoom in a little bit. Depends if uh, GCSE students are more likely to use one of these. Although you might, you might have one of these. So anyway, I'll show you both. All right. So this one has two rails going along there, and then two rails going along there. Now. Um, if you were doing a very simple circuit, it really is, once again, is up to you. Um, you know, sometimes I might do it something like that. Um, and notice I didn't use the very topmost one, just because it's probably going to be easier for me to uh, make a connection going across from the, the uh, shorter distance rather than going from the longer distance. So, yeah, that would be uh, absolutely fine. Uh, but there's also, there's nothing wrong with, with doing it, say, like that or like that either, okay? So uh, it really doesn't matter. I would, though, uh, always keep the power, the input, on the left. I would not have the power on the right. Some people do that. It just starts to get confusing because uh, when we're trying to compare circuits and debug circuits, whatever, uh, it's nice to just check on the um, supply, first of all, and if it's coming in at some weird place, then that becomes problematic. Uh, there are exceptions, I'll maybe show you another example in a bit. Um, but um, you don't have to do it like that. Um, you'll see that this one, rather than having uh, two separate pins, it's a connector with a two pin connector. So uh, I'm going to plug that in like that. Okay. And then so now I've got the positive supply on the very topmost and I've got zero volts down there. OK, so now I've no longer got any rails down here. It might be that you can actually use the breadboard like that, but you know, there's no reason to stop you. Now, it'd be nice. I've just got grey here just because that's what I just got on, on, the, um, on the desk. But um, it'd be nice if you like if you're setting this up black and then also use black and red and have a red jumper But there I've got my zero volts down the very bottom there um, and then Unfortunately, I've now got black so actually that's just You probably find a bit difficult to see the difference between black and grey um, 
uh, on the video anyway but okay so hopefully that makes some sort of sense okay so now um, I've got top one is the positive supply and then zero volts and then it's positive supply and then zero volts so I've just um, duplicated it that's really really convenient so um, for the student who was asking about whether we can have zero volts along the top and then the positive supply along the bottom I would suggest that if you just are doing that because it's convenient with say if you're integrated circuit my recommendation would be to have um, the duplicate the supply rails at the top and at the bottom you'll actually find that much easier uh, here's an example of doing the same okay so I've got those connected here and also because uh, because uh, the rail here needs to be jumped I just use a couple of stripped pieces of wire a lot of students they try to get um, the just like leave a tiny little bit of insulation on the wire that's completely unnecessary uh, unless you're going to short something out going across there just just uh, use uh, entirely exposed wire that would be absolutely fine okay and you know I've done it top and bottom so hopefully that sort of answered a few questions so just to recap ideally yes if you can try to set up the power rails with the power going along the top and the bottom um, of, the, of the breadboard with the positive supply on the top because that's you know the positive there and then zero volts down there uh, it just helps but it, there's absolutely no reason that you have to do it like that other than for consistency and making it easy for everyone else to understand what on earth your layout is and um, my general recommendation anyway is, is going to be to for any co more complex circuit is to have the positive and zero positive and zero like that okay so um, oh one very very last thing uh, sometimes maybe you're going to have a, like a diode uh, protection diode in case you put bad tree wrong way around so in that case then you might do something like that you just grab a wire and then so then you'll then probably then take these zero volts like that and take the that's the zero volts and then you'll have your diode uh, going from the uh, from basically from where the red lead goes into uh, going up to the top there so you know that's that's what a lot of people do um, there's no rule to say you have to do it like that and of course if you're an, uh, an A-level or in fact GCSE uh, projects uh, you can't use these long jumper wires for the final circuit if you do you'll lose points just remember that I'm only showing you these uh, jumper wires just because it's uh, quick um, yeah and it's just easy isn't it okay that's it for the video a little bit longer than I thought but I hope that answers most questions